Hello, I'm Certified Moth, and today the, I am doing a studio vlog of the building process of my final project for my Ceramics 101 class. Actually, I'm not entirely certain this counts as a vlog. I don't know if vlogs have to be real time or not. All of this is sped up clips because this was all done in like the public studio, or it's not public, but like the school studio, so I didn't want to just be filming like videos that potentially had real time footage of other people or their voices in the background. You know how it is. So this is one of those projects, you, you know, you sort of get to do whatever you want to do for it. Or It's a self-portrait project, but those can be pretty much whatever. So the prompt for it was sort of just inspired by whatever artist or culture we did our ceramics presentation on. Which I did the Tang Dynasty ceramics. Those are so cool. They're like, they're not the um, white and blue porcelain. They're like... Well, some of them are plain color. Some of them are like three color with like green, yellow, white. Really cool. And there were sort of two main things of ceramics that they did, which was just like bowls, vessels, and then burial statues. So I had like two ways I could go with a self-portrait. I could have either done like a more vague, like bowls with like decorations that sort of represent me as a person or an actual um, statue. And I did both. <laughs> This clay so far, I've had really bad luck with it cracking in the kiln, so I figure if one of them absolutely explodes, I could always use the other, although I really want to use the statue because I think it turned out more impressive. Maybe not better, but like, it looks more like a final project if you know what I mean. So yeah, I started off with just some practice on the wheel, because it's been a while since I've done it. And then also, um, I was just trying to figure out how I was going to sculpt the face. I've never really sculpted a face. Much less one that's a more stylized face. Like, I've sculpted a realistic nose and that's it. And here's trimming those bowls from earlier. They're not the best, but like, it's been a while, okay? I'm letting myself have this. <laughs> one big annoyance I've had is that all of the Tang Dynasty ceramics were on white clay. Like, it was some of the first porcelain ever made. I think it was the first porcelain. And I only have this brown clay. It turns out sort of orange after bisque firing, but I, like, it's, and some of the glazes, like, are not going to be fully 100% see-through. Like, you're going to be able to see that it's on a brown clay, which would be, kind of be a bummer. So then I, I did end up using slip to turn a couple of these white, but I'm pretty sure all the brown is still going to show through because it's really hard to cover up this clay with a slip. Another reason I'm throwing so many bowls is because we get our clay really cheap. It's all just reclaimed clay that they take from all the leftover clay that the older students don't use and they like wedge it back together, add some, I don't know what's called, powder, dust, not dust, but like they make it usable again. And so it's just like really cheap. So I'm making the most of it and trying to make a whole bunch of bowls that I can use when I'm actually cooking for myself because I have a meal plan this year for university, but next year I'll probably cook for myself and I'll need more dishes. Okay, and this is a really neat building process. So this is for the statue part. And it's something we already did for an assignment, but I'm sort of getting the hang of it more now, which is you just like wedge a whole bunch of clay together, make a big solid mass. And after you let it dry just enough that it'll hold its form, you then take it back out and you cut it and you scoop out all the insides. So I think that clip comes later. I'll talk about it later. <laughs> and wowee, more clay, more wheel throwing. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was definitely having an easier and easier time with this. Sometimes the clay is hard to work with because it's always so much variance in the texture. Sometimes it's super wet, sometimes it's super dry. It's almost never in between, but when it is, it still is just, like, not the easiest clay to work with just because it is reclaim. I think reclaim clay like this is probably better for hand building, not wheel throwing. I mean, I'm not a clay expert. I don't know much about clay. <laughs> But yeah, just lots of bowls. Like this year for class, I learned an entirely new method of throwing that I like I'd been taught before, sort of, and it wasn't really working for me. But this method, it just clicks for me, which is always the best feeling. Although it's like still wheel throwing is so hard, even when you do it over and over again and, or learn a method that works for you. It's just a hard thing to get the hang of. It looks so easy. It's like actually so frustrating. And here's another new day. So this was like the beginning of our fall break for school. We don't really have a reading week, but we have a fall break. Actually, it's the first year my school is doing it. But um, 
I was in the studio for like five or six hours a day working on stuff. I was so done. Like, clay dries your hands out so much. I get so tired in the clay studio. It's actually kind of brutal. But then after five or six hours in the clay studio, I would go back to the dorms, go down to the art studio there, and work on my painting for like another seven or eight hours each night. <laughs> it was something. Oh, and I cut most of this clip because you literally can't see what's happening, but I was sculpting some little cats into the bottom of the bowl. It's my three cats that I have at home. Yeah, so cute. And here's probably the most fun part of the process of the sculpting the statue was cutting it apart and digging out all the insides. It's such a fun process. Like, I don't usually like sculpting, but this is a really fun thing to do. And then just sticking it back together, trying my best <laughs> to make sure it doesn't crack. It might crack along those lines, but what can you do? I mean, there's probably a lot you can do, but I'm not doing any of it. <laughs> And the really nice thing about this process is that you still, because of the air pressure inside, once you get it all put together, you still have that really nice solid, like the air pressure keeps it nice for sculpting, but it's also much lighter. Like I was trying to lift this before it was hollowed out and I almost dropped it. It was like, I would have cried. <laughs> and then when the process is done, you just like poke a couple of holes into it to let the air out or so that you don't create a bomb in the kiln basically. <laughs> Then I picked it up and wetted it down and it started cracking and I had to smooth it out, but I really hope that it this doesn't make it crack more later on. <laughs> then with a bunch of my, my leftover clay, I went and I started wedging it so I could throw it because I was ending off every day with a bunch of wheel throwing. And a lot of this wheel throwing didn't work. I ended up cutting it out just for sake of time. I really like to be sort of honest about the failures in my work when I'm creating videos, but honestly, like, I think this- I think I cut out several minutes of this video which was just wheel throwing fails. So like, I'm just letting you know that probably about half the things I made this day, I scrapped. I don't know if the clay was the wrong consistency, or sometimes you're just tired and it doesn't work and like, you just can't do anything about it. Yeah, like, I took off the top of this bowl, but it still ended up being fine to work with. Wheel throwing is such an interesting balance because you're constantly balancing your motions like for every movement you make up you also have to be balancing out m making sure it doesn't like cave in and then like you're always doing at least two things at once with your hands and it's slow but it's fast and like it's unbalanced and it's balanced and it's like I don't understand it's so difficult. And then I was slipping these bowls so just trying to get them white. The one has a moth on it the other has flowers. The flower one looks shitty. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you it just looks bad. And trying to get the white slip on those bowls was like a whole day process because the clay would absorb, instead of just evaporating the water, the clay would reabsorb it. So I'd have to wait for the clay to dry more before adding the next layer or else it just picks up like wet brown clay and you have to start over again basically. But it genuinely, like I was working on it the whole six or seven hours I was in the studio that day of like every hour or so I'd be able to go and add a layer. And it's, <laughs> it was not the greatest. I still think I didn't do enough layers. But yeah, and I'm pretty sure for one of these trimmings, I went all the way through the center of the bowl and ended up, I ended up making it like this candle holder thing. Or not a candle holder, but like, you know, those things that go over top of candles with all the holes in them and then like the light comes through. And also it fits kind of perfectly over one of the bowls I threw, so maybe there'll be like a two piece set or maybe it'll be on its own. I don't know. And I made this fun and silly square mug. I have such a hard time gauging the size that a mug should be because you know, you always try to take into account the clay is going to shrink like, what, 10%? Maybe more? I actually don't really know. So I'm like, this looks massive, but maybe it'll be the right size once it's fired. It probably won't be, but there's always hoping. <laughs> also, this is a very short mug, like it's kind of too short to be a mug. Oh, and here I think I was working on the, um, the candle cover. I was just poking a whole bunch of holes in it and stuff. I had this really, like, I had the cap of um, a bamboo brush that those things work perfectly. Like it's the same as a straw. If you block off the exit of the air, they work super well for pushing a hole through clay. It's so nice. <laughs> Is this who I am now? Getting excited about how easy it was to poke a hole in clay? <laughs> Man, art school does stuff to your brain. <laughs> but yeah, the holes look kind of big now, but I'm really hoping that once it shrinks, it'll be a nicer size, like for a tea light. 
I don't know. Like, this was not intended to be a candle cover, so it wasn't, like, it's not the proper size or anything, but I still wanted to make a use of it. I liked it, and I didn't want to throw it out. More slipping. Wow. Really exciting. Really fun. Oh, and here's the detail sculpting part of this statue thing. So I am actually super excited about this because originally it was just going to be a statue and then I was like, well, I wanted to sort of represent more of me than just me standing there and I was like, well, I'll make it holding a paintbrush because I like painting and maybe I'll make it hold a canvas with the other hand. And then I was like, but a canvas, a big flat square, that is going to be hell to sculpt. <laughs> so I was like, well, maybe I'll use, like, I'll make a little mini canvas out of not clay. And I was like, I can also make the brush out of not clay and just stick them in. Like if I make a hole, they'll just fit inside of in the hands. And now I'm super excited about that. And I also want to do the glasses that way because glasses, trying to sculpt glasses with clay. Oh my God, they would just shatter. And that's always like in the critique so far, everyone has always been really excited whenever someone adds a, um, a non clay aspect to it. Like somebody added beads to one of their things. Like some people have used paint instead of glazes and it's always a hit. And I'm kind of hoping that even though I struggle with getting smooth clay, like mine always ends up super lumpy, I don't know what it is, but I'm hoping that adding these more interesting aspects will sort of make up for it. I think one of my least favorite things in this is the hair. Hair is so hard to sculpt, especially like this is not a realistic style as I'm sure you can tell, but it's so hard to find this right point where the hair doesn't just look nasty. Also, I forgot to give the proper definition to the arms, but it's too late because like two days after I get back to, the, back to the school, like after my break ends, that's when the final bisque firing is going to be. So like too bad for me if I wanted to work on anything else because I need to put it, make sure it's dry and put it on the kiln shelf or else I'm just fucked. Also, this statue has a hardcore lean to it. Like it kept turning the um, banding wheel. <laughs> if I would stop holding it, it would just turn it on its own and it was so annoying. And I could have just recentered it, but I could not be bothered. So yeah, that's basically all the building process. This stuff should be ready to go in the kiln by next week. Thank you so much for watching this video. You know, I know everyone says this, but I would really, really appreciate it. It would help so much if you supported me by liking or subscribing or commenting. My last sketchbook tour passed a thousand views the other day, so thank you guys so much for that. Like, I almost lost my mind when I saw it. I was so excited. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope to see you again next time. Bye.